I'm originally from Maine, but we're in Phoenix right now. Okay, did you tell me that before? No. Wow. Here's our card. It's like, you had, I had one of those deja vus like I've known you before. Yeah. <laughs> it's a past life moment. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's why we get along so well. I love Phoenix. My parents moved to Phoenix when they retired from Nebraska. Oh, really? Yeah, they went to Sun City. Oh, Sun City's beautiful. It's really gorgeous. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and it was wonderful for them because a lot of their friends were there from yeah. Nebraska. And my husband and I were married over there. Oh, really? Yeah, because they had a beautiful place. where they, The heritage where they were living was yeah. gorgeous. Oh. And I helped them move into it. And Dan and I thought, well, let's just do it over there. And yeah. then the ministry baptized me in Nebraska oh, when wow. I was nine months old and adopted in Nebraska. Yeah. He was living there. So he was able to officiate the wedding. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So Phoenix. I love Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. I, I moved there when uh, 2004. I haven't left. Okay, did you leave just for a job or no? just for uh, the heck of it? Yeah, my brother said I would like it, so I moved. Oh, and he knew? Yeah, He's, well, he knew me. Was he, he living there? I no. Did he, he didn't, he just nope. said, he said, boy, he said, you don't need humidity. You moved to, you can move to yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, just uh, just so, uh, hey, you know, I was like, I don't know where I want to go. And he goes, you know what? I think you'll like Phoenix. So he was not wrong. I think anybody who would, would like Phoenix, um, who likes dry air yes and likes you know warm winters and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing it's just no absolutely perfect <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i love it i really i really love and i loved i love that they went there because it's closer to california than nebraska yes yeah yes. i mean nebraska is pretty but but yeah yeah but it's humid in the summer and very very hot and then it's below zero the entire winter yeah, yeah you can't leave your house <laughs> i love i love nebraska so that's where i grew up and i and, and i love the snow and i love i love everything about it and i love the fact that it's a conservative state with a with a, a liberal kind of bent right there's a lot of of liberal thinkers in nebraska which you'd be surprised about you right. know um so i love it and their educational system is so good yeah their universities their medical is incredible they were the one of the people when we had that, every had to go into those tanks and they couldn't travel. It was the disease that was going around. Omaha was one of the places that could actually cure them. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know so that. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's, yeah. Yeah, I guess. That's awesome. But Phoenix has everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything goes through Phoenix, I feel like. Yeah. Everything, music, television, movies, it all comes through. Yeah. Yeah. And good schools. Yeah. 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 If you pay for the good schools. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, the good schools aren't really free, are they? No, <laughs> they never are. <laughs> oh, darn. Well, you have to get some good grades in order to get in, which is oh, sometimes really hard. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do start with the interview. And um, I'm going to do an intro. And at the end, we always end with stay scared. And I'll remind you if you forget. So Stay scared. Will I know when to say it? Yeah. Uh, okay. When I wrap up, I'm like, OK. Um, thank you for joining us, and remember, stay scared. Yes, perfect, <laughs> perfect. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Marsha Parker, and we're here at the Halloween 40th com uh, Convention uh, in Pasadena, California. And I get to interview the most lovely person, Miss Leslie Easterbrook. How are you doing today? Oh, you kind of got it wrong. Oh, you I know. know. I got so I'm nervous. Not, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not a lovely person. Oh, no, no, no. You are amazing. And oh, an inspiration to a lot of those aspiring females out there trying to make it in Hollywood. I mean, to, to have so much dignity and respect like you do and all the work that you have put out there, I mean, it's, it truly is inspiring. Well, I mean, you humble me and you flatter me, and that's, that's, that's nice. Thank you very much. Thank you very I just, I simply got lucky. I just, I got, I got very, very lucky with the people that I met and the timing, and it's always something about timing. I know I was in California. I'd done I'd done California Sweet, the play, Neil Simon play. I originated mm -hmm. character in it, and I'd done that for a year or so on Broadway. And I was out in California, and someone called. I got this call, and they said, "Can you get back? There's an audition for covering the lead and on the 20th Century the musical." Can you go? And I blah, 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 and and I was doing musicals and operas and plays. And I came back, and I, I don't think I even read for it. They just gave me the job. And so I was covering Judy Kay, who took over from Madeline Kahn. It was all, and I, this casting director runs in one night before I'm, I'm going to start watching the show so I can really learn it. Mm -hmm. She comes in, and she goes, can you work on a movie tomorrow? And I went, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I said, I'll just, I got rehearsal and whatnot, but not until later in the day. And she said, OK. She said, I'm going to write it down. And she said, where are you going? I was going to go, you know, to, to up to the Astoria in Queens, the movie studio. Right. 
and work on a film, Just Tell Me What You Want, um, with Sidney Lumet as the director and Alan King as the star and Ali McGraw and all these people. Anyway, it's basically, you know, it's just probably maybe a line, but maybe just kind of an extra, but we, they'd really like somebody that has a bit of experience. And So the next day I get up really early and I get on the subways and I figure it all out and I get up there and I go in and I introduce myself and they say, oh yeah, and they sit me down with the extras, they put a nurse's uniform on me and all this. So I'm sitting there with the extras having a wonderful time. Yeah. And it turns out the cast food is better. It's in the back. But I'm okay with the egg. I like it. I don't yeah. know. Am I an extra? I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. Right. So I sit there for all day. <laughs> and it's now time. And I said, I now have to go because I have to be in the theater. I'm yeah. doing the theater. And they said, okay, come tomorrow. So I went, oh, okay. So I went into the night. And then I got on the thing the next day. I'm in my little green outfit. I say cookie. My little thing says cookie. <laughs> my nurse's uniform, eating the extra's food. Yeah but having a good time with all the extras. And all of a sudden, we're in a soundstage, and they have lots of different sets on a soundstage. Down the hall that they have created, in this, it's supposed to be like a hospital, uh -huh. I hear this big voice say, where's my nurse? <laughs> and I think, I'm Cookie, I got a nurse's uniform, that must be me. So Sidney Lamette <laughs> walks out, and I go, I'm your nurse. <laughs> and he said, hey, Cookie, can you talk? I said, too much, they tell me. He goes, talk to me. I said, okay. He said, but down here with Alan King. So he took me down with Alan King, and I got a line in the movie. Wow. And it was it was just, you're too subtle when he hits on you. You know, yeah. I'm doing the bed around him in the hospital thing. He's in the bed. And so that basically got me an audition for Laverne and Shirley. Wow. After the, I was done with On the 20th Century and living in, in L.A., I yeah. said, so you want to see her for this character of Rhonda they're creating? And I went, oh, no, 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 I can't, I, I can't possibly do that. Now, oh, my gosh, a sitcom, you get new scripts every day. And yeah. I, know, I, know, I, can't. I had five auditions, and I got the role wow. of Rhonda on Laverne and Shirley because it's Paramount. And in the Just Tell Me What You Want, the movie, I was the only laugh. What? That's my, awesome. My, you're too subtle was the only laugh. So they wanted that woman to create this new character on the Burn and Shirley because she could get a laugh. <laughs> and then I go work with the greatest comedians of all time. You know, I, I don't get the laughs they do. And, you know, I never would. I never could. Penny and Cindy and you know, Lenny and Squiggy and, you know, everybody. Yeah. But it was kind of wonderful and it led to Police Academy. Yeah. So. so how was your experience with Police Academy? Fantastic. Absolutely. I, I, I love doing that first movie. It was it was a life changer because I spent my life growing up in Nebraska and being like I was always tall. I was, I was five, seven when I was in third grade. Yeah. And uh, I always had to tone it down, mm -hmm. you know, just tone it down, just tone it down because, you know, I, I wanted to go, hey, four, or, you know, or, you know, <laughs> don't talk to me like that. You know, I couldn't do it. And so finally I got to play a role who was my inner person right you know yeah. she's tough she's strong you know she's sexual <laughs> you know and she's not afraid to admit it yeah. you know and to carry on and I just thought how wonderful and then I had done theater with George Gaines who okay. was Commandant Lassard when I read the script I fell out of a chair when I the podium scene came up because I knew George so well I knew it would be classic comedy right that was the one thing that just struck me I said to work with George again I'd give my arm right and it turned out to be that way. But I literally fell out of the chair. It wasn't, a, I'm not kidding. I mean, I started laughing and I literally plopped on my head. And I said, I have to do this movie. I just yeah. have to be around this positive energy. Yeah. And then the cast of the Police Academy movies is a positive energy personified. Yeah. It's a group of people who adore each other and who will yell at each other in a scene and hug each other as soon as it's over. It, it just bonding. It's a, it was a bonding process and when the film came out and and they painted our poster on the wall at Warner Brothers and we were all driving over there and looking at it and having parties. <laughs> we would have street parties because they we were on the on the wall right, at Warner's, you know. Right. And we were so dopey about the whole thing. But we were all just just tears of joy. Yeah. That film was so much fun to do and liberating. Yeah. You know, for Marion who was hooks and all we're liberating for women. Right. And liberating it just it was wonderful to be that kind of tough. And it gave me an enormous respect for police officers all over the world. Anybody who is any, any kind of a police officer position, yeah. what you have to go through. And I don't know how you do it in, a, in real life, but right. we, are, we are so lucky yes. to have people yes. who spend their lives doing that yes. real, their real job. And we always hoped on every film that we weren't going to cross the line and spoof police officers or say anything that was negative or make them look too foolish. Right. 
And I think we went over the line a few times, but we didn't mean to. Right. And the response to it all these years later is just so heartwarming yes. to have had the best time working in your life and then to constantly have people reminding you of it and talking about how much they've enjoyed all the different stupid, you know, because they got stupider as they went yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. But now we may do number eight. Yeah. It's a young audience that, you know, women can be sexy and tough. It, yes. Like, it, without having <laughs> to play to the audience too much, like, you don't have to dumb it down. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it was, that women, women yeah. can simply be a tough person with a sense of humor, yes. you know, and a, and, a, and a sense of humility. And I think most cops, even the real tough ones that scare you to death when you're trying to get past them so they won't notice that you, you know, they won't think you're the one that did it. Right. <laughs> Have senses of humor. Right, I right. found out so much about police officers and personalities because yeah. we always had them on the set. We, yeah. always, we wanted to make sure that everything was by the book. Yeah. And they were as fun as anybody else. I feel like with a type of job like that, you have to have a sense of uh, sense of humor. Otherwise, how do you how do you make it through the day? I mean, I had to have a sense of humor on Devil's Rejects. Oh, I because, bet. Because I mean, sometimes it was physically painful. Oh. And but just you know the attention mm -hmm. that some of that that some of that had was really hard. And I I had to keep a sense of humor going. I had to keep myself happy. Yeah. So speaking about Devil's Rejects, you were talking earlier and you were telling me about that awesome scene you had with Baby um, and you were telling me uh, how you guys came up with, uh, how you were inspired about doing that very touching scene with her and I was hoping you could share it. Well, it was kind of, it was, it was both Sherry, uh, Sherry and I and we were sitting uh, on the floor before the shootout scene at the very beginning of the movie and there was just time to sit there because they were lighting. Mm -hmm. And lighting always takes much longer than acting. So uh, I said to her, you know, we're, there's a shootout, and I try to protect you, and, and you know, by shooting myself in the head, you basically, yeah. I must love you enormously. Right. She said, yeah. She said, I must love you too. And I said, yeah. It's too, I wonder if we should do any ad-libbing. And so, I, so, so she said, yeah, maybe we could ad-lib something about, I love you, mama, and I love you, baby. And, you know, we're going to be okay. And, you know, just talk to each other. Yeah. But we didn't want to do anything. And so she said, we'll talk to Rob and see if we can ad-lib. And so he comes through. You know, he's been out with the lighting, and he's been looking around. And he comes walking through. And, and, I, and I think it was Sherry said, oh, Rob, you know, can, you know uh, Leslie has one thing she wants to talk to you about. <laughs> and I said, Okay, <laughs> and I said, "Couldn't it's okay if we ad lib a little bit?" Because I mean, we love each other. We want to set this up as the fact that I'm being really evil, but it's because I really love my family. He right. goes, "Um," oh. turns around and walks out. <laughs> so Sherry and I look at each other. And go, yeah, I guess not. And, yeah. You know, we just talk about other things because it's a long lighting thing. It's a big scene to light. He's yeah. got other things on his mind. About 20 minutes later, he comes walking in with this beautiful little scene that he just wrote. It's typed up. He gives her a copy, he gives me a copy, and it's the one like, when he was a fucking baby. It was that, it's that scene, it's a beautiful little scene. Yeah. So he really, really listened, he really heard, and, and it was important to us playing the rest of the movie for our yeah. characters and how we approached everything. Yeah. You know, because I die for my family. Yeah. You know, I died to waylay the sheriff. So we really cared about each other. Yeah. But the fact that he didn't say anything, he just wrote a wonderful scene that people will come up to me at events like this and they'll say, oh, you was a fucking baby. Yes. You know, like they'll say that. And I go, oh my gosh, you remember that. And they, yeah. yeah, I really remember it. Well, it's, it's such a physical performance, yeah. too. Yeah. Was there, was there a lot of training that you put yourself through that you didn't have? Mm, I wish I could say yes, but I was in pretty good shape at the time, just sort of normally. You know, I belonged to a gym. I'd go three to four days a week, but I wouldn't, like, push myself too hard. Right. right? I would tell myself I was, but I wouldn't really push myself too hard. Um, I wish I had known kind of what to do because it was it was really physical death, you know, yeah. the physical, because I was, I was standing up, and yeah. I was supposed to be getting some cues as to when I was stabbed and when everything was happening, yeah. and I, the cues were not that clear, and I had to slide down the wall with my eyes open because I had already died right. and without breathing. And it was really, really hard. And, you know, I'm pushing against the wall, but it's only a set wall. Right. You know, it could go at any moment. Right. And anything that would have broken that would have right. been, you know, difficult to reshoot right. and redo. Yeah. And then I knew that when I got probably that far from the ground, I would fall. Right. You know, and on my shoulder. And so I was trying to, without looking like a live person, trying to transition my shoulder so it wouldn't 
like break it or something mm -hmm. so it'd be on this fatty part of it yeah so it was I was constantly calculating all the way down wow. and saying fuck you Rob fuck you Rob fuck you Rob <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was, you know, yeah. you could have yelled cut, we could have done it in a different angle, and then, you know, and, and not had to, like, hang out so long dead. Or use a real wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, uh, we've actually talked to Sid several times at different conventions in Hague. So was, did you have a good time working with him as well? I had a ball working with Sid. I had a ball working with everybody on the set. It was really, I'm especially fond of Sid. Sid, Sid got me into doing these, do the, the autograph things. Oh, really? Yeah, and I remember... Oh my gosh, and he's so he's he's a delight. And he played. I got him. I, I I asked him to be my husband on a no, another film. We have a film out. I can't remember the name of it, but Sid's we're husband and wives in it. It's not a very good Aww. film, but he had a. I loved I loved Sid. So he, he did my first show, and then he said, "Well, you've got to charge." I'm charging twenty bucks. Yeah. He said, "Okay." He said, "You got to charge something because otherwise they won't let you sign." And I said, "But you know, Sid, I'll never charge a penny more." <laughs> and he said, "Well, you probably won't do any more films either." He was just always oh, so fun. <laughs> Sid has a great sense of humor. And then, of course, I end up inviting him in to do yeah. another film. Yeah. But uh, that I made that decision. Yeah. That I would pay people to come. And I would give them an autograph. And I would pay them to have the conversations that we have at these. Yeah. They're so informative. And you become so informed about your work. And they, they will talk about your work. And something, that, and something that they didn't like. Or something they didn't like in a film that you're in. And I, I get I get much more out of these, uh, out, of, out of these signing well, than, than I ever expected. Exactly, and it's like doing a play with a talk about afterwards. Right. You know. Yeah, and 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 realize what some people want and why they want a picture and what phrase they want on it, and I can say to them, why that one. Right. And they can talk about this or that or the other thing, and I'll think, wow, that was brilliant filmmaking in the way it was edited that led it up to that. And of course, that's a dream. Or I can think, oh, it was somebody's performance that they really, you know, liked in that. So it's, it's very instructive. These yeah. are these are very instructive. Yeah. You know, I figure if I ever work again, I'll know more about <laughs> what I'm doing. I just I just did a, hung, a a Hungarian film. Oh really? Yeah, I did it in L.A., but it's 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 it takes place in L.A. too, but it's a Hungarian filmmakers, Hungarian product. Uh, it's called Stuck. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the deal was it's like you tiny no money, right, mm -hmm. to, to do it, but if it gets any kind of nominations or attention, two tickets to the uh, to the uh, Budapest Film Festival. Wow. And I said, would that be a cool thing? That would thing? be so cool. Yeah, so I, mean, I think in life, it's sometimes you don't measure things by the money you make, but by the experiences that you have. Yes. And I've had enough of uh, wonderful yeah. experiences for a lifetime, but I'm gonna have some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, all, we're all attracted to this because it's, equally, it's fun to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, it's yeah. like playing as a kid. Yeah. No, you're making up your stories and making up your own names yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I'm, I was going to say, uh, do you want to just kind of tie it all together with kind of what you're up to nowadays, what, where we can like follow you on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that? <laughs> you know, this is the no, promo the, part. The, the, the promo part. The reason that, the, oh, Lord, it's so hard for me to do that. And the reason that I... The, the idea. We'll the links in the I mean, I have I have a Twitter. I've never done it. I think I did it once, and I have Instagram. I've never done it because, well, Renee Geerling, right. who's married to Tyler Maine, talked me into doing it, and she's here, and I, I have to go to box her ears, you know, because I because I never did it. And then I have a Facebook, but I have a wonderful friend named Maya Gubo. He is so so dear to me, and it has been for many many years. And she runs the thing for me. Oh. So if you want to get information to me or ask me a question, Maya's there, and she okay. will she'll send it along to me, which is a sweet thing for her to do. But I met her I met her a long time ago when I was doing a play in Kentucky, and she came down to visit and whatnot. And we just we just fell madly in love. She's she's like my daughter, and but she's got a whole family, wonderful family of her yeah. own. But she doesn't do anything too much outside the house, so she she has the time to do it. Yeah. But the generosity is what she's spending, and, and it's, that's so. Then anyway, you can catch me on Facebook, <laughs> on Instagram. She's saying I have to get back on my Instagram. And what happened with me and and Instagram, all of this and Facebook, is that when I realized how these worked, yeah. at first we were all a little bit like just you know mystified by it. I realized people have access to you, and if somebody asks you for 
uh, to write something about something or to look at something and see if whatever it is you want to do it and you can't get to them right away they will feel snubbed I found it another way to let people down you know and instead of um, and also just kind of a little bit nervous about large forums yeah because sometimes when you say something you have an opinion about something and you say it one day you feel a little different the next day right. if you told 400,000 people that's not good if right. you just told your best friend that's okay you can clear that up but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a private person at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm real gregarious, and you know, I like to be out and about, and I like, I loved, I love to come to these shows. I get so much out of watching people, yeah. and then hearing their comments about what they like and they don't like, and the people they like at the show, and all of this. It's just, it's a fantasy world, and it's delicious yeah. because it's reality in the fantasy world. Right. I mean, it's like blending those two things together, and it's quite wonderful. So that, so I don't do a lot of social media, but I do like to get out and about. Okay. Well, what is your next convention? Well, it's I don't, not really a, a convention. I'm doing a signing in Vassalia, California. Okay. okay. But Marion Ramsey and I from Police Academy are going to be talking to kids who are in theater Ooh. in high school, or That's and cool. and I think junior high school, and they want to be because she did a lot of Broadway and I did mm -hmm. Broadway and. I started as an opera singer, and you know, then how we ended up doing what we're doing is talk about the industry. And then we're doing a signing for either one or two days up there, but it's not a big one or anything. But I think exciting. I do have a, a, a big one that's off in the future. I just can't remember what it is. But I love I love doing them because it's the way I get informed. Well, we'll definitely like advertise something, yeah. but I can't think of anything. Well, have your friend put it on Facebook. And we'll send everybody over to your Facebook page so they can track you down so that way they have an opportunity to meet you because you have been yeah. absolutely wonderful. Oh, you're uh, a wonderful one. Yeah, oh, uh, you're, you're great. This is, this is terrific. Well, it's Mama But Firefly is one of my favorite mamas out there in the horror world. Like, literally, Isn't I, she when, great? when I saw you, I was like, I was fangirling really hard, and I'm so... <laughs> happy but, you know you gotta, that you took the time with us today because well, i just got to tell you you, you know no created no no characters create themselves no and when someone like you you know someone like rob zombie that's how i met rob and his kind of imagination gives all of his actors room to grow fly bloom whatever you call it without writers and directors like rob zombie we wouldn't as actors ever get the chance to do right. these things so you always got to go to the core and the, and the source, and the yeah. source is Rob. Yeah. So I'm forever grateful. Uh, well, we're forever grateful for you to spend thank the time you. with us. Well, thank you so much for watching. And remember, stay scared. Stay scared. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. And uh, uh, we're here at the Horror Show. And remember, stay scared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And remember, <laughs> oh, you oh, do. I'm sorry. Oh, you do. Okay, well, close up again. <laughs>